and welcome to Frisco, Texas, site of the 2013 FCS National Championship between the North Dakota State Bison and the Sam Houston State Bearcats. Alongside Sports Director Jake Cheetah, I'm Ryan Nelson, bringing you this Bison Information Network pregame show just outside of FC Dallas Stadium. Jake, only a year ago we were here talking about these same two teams and what they needed to do to win. And here we are one more time. It's a little different this year because last year Sam Houston was ranked number one. The Bison were ranked number two. This year the Bison are number one. Sam Houston is ranked number five. But both teams definitely deserve this. And we are seeing a game between the two best teams in the nation. And we thought last year was a turnout. All the fans here today, unbelievable turnout. And I think the fans who were here last year came back. And the fans who missed it last year, they weren't going to miss it again this year. Last year I was surprised to look around and see all the green and gold in the stands. And this year I'm even more surprised to see how many North Dakota State, North Dakota license plates, excuse me, we have down here. A lot of fans drove the thousand miles to get to this game. Ryan, we had the opportunity to experience the drive that most of the Bison fans undertook this week from Fargo to Frisco. For those of you that don't know, the drive is just over 1,000 miles and takes roughly 15 hours. To get to Frisco is a relatively simple path. Travel south on I-29 outside of Fargo for 420 miles through Omaha, Nebraska. Shortly after, you will merge to US 75 South. After entering Kansas, you will travel over 100 miles on the Kansas Turnpike. One final 230 mile jolt down I-35 will land you in Frisco, Texas, just outside of Dallas. And Jake, it's amazing to me, not just the number of fans that are here today, but all the North Dakota Minnesota license plates you see, which shows you these fans were in it for the long haul. They didn't just get on a plane and fly here in a couple hours. They drove the entire way, and they're here supporting the Bison today. And it doesn't matter where fans came from, Fargo, the Twin Cities, it's a 15-hour drive either way. Fans came from all over the country to see the Bison play here in Texas. Busy, bustling, and bison are three words that describe the streets of Frisco, Texas. News director Allie Weary uncovers what makes Frisco the ideal destination for a football championship. As the fastest growing city in the country, Frisco, Texas has a lot to offer. The growing process, however. It's hard to put it in perspective if someone has never experienced that. You know, building and opening four to six schools every single year is interesting to watch. Uh, Along with that growth, of course, everything else explodes. Office buildings, uh, residential, um, retail. So they, they consider us retail capital of the world in Texas. Mayor Masso attributes the success to the city's approach. Frisco itself specifically, we're a very well-balanced community. Uh, you know, some cities really focus on one thing, one thing and they're really good at it. Well, we try to be really good at everything we do. Which includes knowing how to prepare for the herd's arrival. We work closely with your alumni association and we contracted with uh, Dr. Pepper uh, uh, Ballfield uh, ball, uh, out there at the Rough Rider Stadium. Frisco has proved just how accommodating it can be. It, it's a design city that is made to be accommodating of people visiting, of people coming and going. A lot of great restaurants, a lot of great new sporting venues as you point out. Uh, you, you couldn't ask for a better, more cutting edge environment. It's clear to see why the entire community gets excited for the game. It's top level football. I mean, we can never forget this is the only true football championship in the college level in the country. These teams and these student athletes had to work really hard to get here and they had to go through a playoff system, which is not easy. And as for the Bison in the city of Frisco. You all make a pretty big impression. The FCS National Championship game will continue to be in Frisco for another three years. It was announced this week the contract will be renewed and both teams, whoever you talk to, they're happy about it. I am very glad as a fan that the FCS decided to keep it, the championship in Frisco. It's just a great atmosphere and every year Frisco is getting bigger and better. And now this, this event is normally a soccer stadium, Major League Soccer Stadium, but this has been a perfect event. It doesn't hold as many seats as the Fargo Dome, but just the atmosphere in this city is electric. So it makes it a great city, not just a stadium for this game. Everywhere in downtown Frisco, right by the stadium, supports both teams. They have signs up in the windows and they are welcoming fans, get, making deals for fans, and it's just a great environment. After the break, we will show you just how many fans made the long journey and the mark they made in this city. Jitters is your home for quality coffee drinks. Whether you crave an espresso, iced coffee, mocha, or macchiato, Jitters has just what you need. Now featuring breakfast foods like caramel rolls, bagels, and more, be sure to get your day started right. 
Located on 12th Avenue North, Jitters has a friendly, relaxed atmosphere with Wi-Fi capability to get all of your studying done on time. Get your fix only at Jitters. Hey, I'm Alex. I'm Austin. And I'm here to tell you about 15 on 15. It means MapBus arrives every 15 minutes on Route 15. From downtown to around town. Find out more about 15 on 15 at MapBus.com. Check it out on Facebook and Twitter. Keyword, MapBus. So fast and convenient. There are way more than 15 reasons to check out 15 on 15. I ride MapBus. And I ride MapBus. And, and you, you should, should too. too. Watch SUTV News on Cable One. Produced by students of Bison Information Network, we promise to bring you all the latest news and sports from the campus of North Dakota State University. Watch SUTV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. Welcome back to the 2013 FCS National Championship pregame show on the Bison Information Network. Last night, close to 8,000 fans gathered for a pep fest south of FC Dallas Stadium at Dr. Pepper Ballpark, home of the Frisco Rough Riders, the AA affiliate of the Texas Rangers. Here's an inside look at just how loud and crazy things got last night. insane I mean I I mean I wish I could experience this on an everyday basis as far as you know being around the people and and the fans and their uh, you know their devotion to the team and uh, to the Bison. We heard stories about it last year you know being at our hotel doing meetings and doing all the player stuff but once you really see it it's something special I mean it really is. But it's pretty special when you see all the former players and all their families. I mean, man, it's a pretty cool thing that number one, like you said, everybody's coming out for the game, but it's even more special when you get a group like this together and really just kind of the camaraderie and everybody feels like they're a part of it, and that's pretty special. Not too hot. We got a little bit of snow coming down, a lot of fans coming out, and uh, we're going to tear the place up. Came all this way because I'm the biggest Bison fan. Woo! I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win. Why would you drive this far for a bison game? Why wouldn't you? This is quite crazy. It's lots of people. North Dakota nice, North Dakota pride, and seeing how nice the people of Texas treat us. Hail the bison! Hail the bison! With the tails up in the air! Frisco was there, Gene Taylor was there, President Dean Bershani spoke, and the fans were energized. Yeah, and it was cool to see all the former players there as well. Craig Dahl, current St. Louis Ram, uh, got on the stage last night and said a few words. Uh, the team sang their traditional song. I mean, it was a truly amazing event. Last year, it got a little too packed. It wasn't 
a lot of fun for anybody, but this year it was an amazing venue. Fans had a great time, an amazing fireworks display, and it was right outside of Sam Houston State's hotel room, so Bison fans love that. Only NDSU can sell out a ballpark in a town a thousand miles from Fargo. Many of those same fans made their way to the tailgating lot here outside FC Dallas Stadium early this morning. Ryan Borsman is there and shows us why tailgating isn't just for Bison home dealers. Go Bison! Let's go Bison! When you, when you hit the Texas, hey, let's, let's go, go Bison! Bison. Uh, 21-17, NDSU. Like yeah. 14-7. Oh! Woo! Go Bison! Yeah! yeah. Oh, no! Bison! Woo. There he is, right there, the cameraman. Go Bison! Oh. You're on the camera. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my ESPN hands. ESPN top 10 plays right here. Is it right? <laughs> and Jake, how the home team is determined here for the FCS National Championship is you literally flip a coin, and the Bison lost the coin toss this year, so they're the away team. So the tailgating lots have switched sides of the stadium, but I don't think a lot of Bison fans know that, and they've kind of invaded the Sam Houston State tailgate lot. I don't think a lot of the Bison fans care either. The lot over here is a little bit bigger. Bison fans are all over down here. They're in tailgate town. They're in both tailgating lots. It's crazy. Many Bison fans have been in Texas for a number of days getting a chance to experience the culture and see just what it is all about. In this edition of Sidewalk Stampede, Adam Kempenick finds out what are the best parts of Texas. Bearcat Nation, baby, coming all the way to Frisco. Absolutely. Seeing the sea of orange every day, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, the tailgating. The best part of the tailgating is being with your friends, drinking, having a good time before the game, and uh, watch the Bearcats whip up on the bison. Even the bison get bigger in Texas. I think it's just as crazy here as it is back home. I did see people jump down a fire or a what has been your favorite part of being down in Texas? I'd like to say the weather, because it's supposed to be hot down here, but it's been cold this week. It feels a little bit like North Dakota, but it's, it hasn't been too bad. But I'd definitely say the food, the food and the barbecue in Texas especially. The barbecue in North Dakota, Minnesota is good but it's unmatched in Texas. My favorite part has definitely been the atmosphere. Seeing this many Bison fans down in Texas, it's been crazy. And the fans have been busy. They've had events planned last night. They've had events planned all morning, starting at 8 a.m. this morning. So this has been a very busy vacation for them. Frisco has done a great job planning lots of events for these fans, because many of them here got here even before the team did this week. So there's, they need to have lots of things to do. And the city of Frisco has been great about it. It has also been a busy week for the players. After the break, we'll show you what they did for fun and how they help give back to the community. Watch SU TV News on Cable One. Produced by students of Bison Information Network, we promise to bring you all the latest news and sports from the campus of North Dakota State University. Watch SU TV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. Hey, I'm Alex. I'm Austin. And I'm here to tell you about 15 on 15. It means MatBus arrives every 15 minutes on Route 15. From downtown to around town. 
Find out more about 15 on 15 at mapbus.com. Check it out on Facebook and Twitter. Keyword, Mapbus. So fast and convenient. There are way more than 15 reasons to check out 15 on 15. I ride Mapbus. And I ride Mapbus. And, and you, you should, should too. too. Welcome back to the 2013 FCS Championship pregame show brought to you by the Bison Information Network. On Wednesday afternoon, players from both Sam Houston State and North Dakota State visited the Children's Medical Center in Plano, Texas, close to seven miles away from the stadium. The children of the hospital were very happy to see the players in their room, some even a bit shy around them. Kyle Emanuel, Carlton Littlejohn, Joe Lund, Cole Jurek, Billy Turner, Garrett Brune, and Coach Bull arrived at the hospital at around 2.30 Wednesday afternoon. Players went room to room handing out NDSU Bison pillow pets and interacting with several patients. The experience served as a relief to the patients, but maybe made an even bigger impact on the players. Well, I was kind of bored. Um, and then when they came in, I had something to do. It was fun. And yeah. It's awesome, you know, anything we can do to give back to these kids. I mean, they're going through stuff that's a lot bigger than uh, anything football-wise. And uh, if we can just come, you know, do anything we can to, you know, give them a little, brighten their day just a little bit, you know, that's awesome and we love to do it. Socket suffers from leukemia, a form of cancer. The Children's Medical Center in Plano can house up to 72 patients at a time. Now, last year, the players all got to go to a school and hang out with uh, younger students and read to them. This year, they got to see some patients. It's really amazing that they get to go out and be a part of the community. And from the players you talked to, this year I think was, was a, their favorite experience because it was a more individual you know, type of experience with the patients. They didn't, weren't all treated as, a, as one football team. They got to interact one on one, going to about six or seven different rooms. And they had extra pill pets, so they were gonna give those to the rest of the student, the patients uh, in the hospital. So it was really a great event. And the players, you could really tell, were touched. And the patients loved it too. It gave them something to do it. And, and some role models to look up to. Thursday, both teams attended the championship banquet, which was held at the Embassy Suites in Frisco at noon. During the conference, both coaches spoke and everyone was treated to a lunch. Drew Pearson, a former wide receiver for the Cowboys and a Super Bowl winner, spoke about his experience in the NFL and told the players to appreciate being able to compete in a national championship. Leslie Thornton, an NDSU linebacker from Bismarck, North Dakota, won the Elite 89 award during the banquet. This award goes out to the player who has the highest GPA and is in the finals for NCAA sport to Esley. One of those guys who came in as a quarterback, now a linebacker, asked to do a lot of different things, but grade point average and being a good student, first of all, is very important to him. He got to go accept his award, and Drew Pearson made a speech, and his speech was amazing. He just wanted to reiterate that students should be thankful for everything that they are offered and talked about what it's like to become an NFL player. Besides all of the practicing interviews and formalities playing in the FCS National Championship, the players also got to have some fun while interacting with the players of the other team. The Great Texas Barbecue Bowl took place on Wednesday night at the main event just across from the interstate from the stadium. Ryan Borstelman gives us an inside look at the sights and sounds of this event. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's not too many times you just can play unlimited games like this, but um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we get, have the opportunity to do this. Now, we're predicting twice as many fans as we had last time. The people that were here last time don't want to miss it, and the people that were, weren't here don't want to miss it. Well, the strategy is, is we're going to put our best bowlers up and we're just going to knock pins down and then we're going to get it done. Yep.
with the final score of 81 to 112, our winners from North Dakota State! That's the noise winners of the 2013 Barbecue Texas Bowl out here. Now last year the Bison lost the bowling competition, won the game. This year they did it a little different. There were two bowling competitions. The Bison pulled it off. It was a little bit different this year. They also incorporated bull riding. We got to see uh, some managers, student athletes, and coaches ride bulls. So uh, they did a pretty good job, but it was really a fun event. And it was cool to see that these teams are trying to get better themselves. They're not worried about Sam Houston State, or they, they don't hate the players from Sam Houston State. They're all playing a game. Obviously, they're gonna compete today and try to win a national championship, but they got to interact, get to know each other, and that's always a cool thing to see. It is, and Coach Bull even said he and Coach Willie Fritz have become great friends since last season, and I think that's happening with the players too. They know each other from the season ago, and they're all becoming very close. Although the players are getting along, there is a game to be played here today. After the break, we'll break down just how the Bison got here and examine a couple of key players for the FCS National Championship here in Frisco. We'll be right back. Jitters is your home for quality coffee drinks. Whether you crave an espresso, iced coffee, mocha, or macchiato, Jitters has just what you need. Now featuring breakfast foods like caramel rolls, bagels, and more, be sure to get your day started right. Located on 12th Avenue North, Jitters has a friendly, relaxed atmosphere with Wi-Fi capability to get all of your studying done on time. Get your fix only at Jitters. Hey, I'm Alex. I'm Austin. And I'm here to tell you about 15 on 15. It means MatBus arrives every 15 minutes on Route 15. From downtown to around town. Find out more about 15 on 15 at MatBus.com. Check it out on Facebook and Twitter. Keyword, MatBus. So fast and convenient. There are way more than 15 reasons to check out 15 on 15. I ride MatBus. And I ride MatBus. And, and you, you should, should too. too. Watch SU TV News on Cable One. Produced by students of Bison Information Network, we promise to bring you all the latest news and sports from the campus of North Dakota State University. Watch SU TV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. Welcome back to the 2013 FCS National Championship pregame show brought to you by the Bison Information Network. For North Dakota State, they have been battle tested during the FCS playoffs. Here's a look at how they got here. After an opening round bye, they met rival South Dakota State for the second time in three weeks, winning in, a, in dominating style 28-3. The following week in the Fargo Dome, the Bison met the nation's leading rusher in Eric Breitenstein and the Wofford Terriers, but pulled out a close 14-7 victory. And finally, in one of the best games in Fargo Dome history, the Bison met Georgia Southern for a semifinal rematch of only a year ago, winning 23-20. The game against Georgia Southern, it was loud. It came down to that last minute touchdown by Brock Jensen. I've never heard the Fargo Dome that loud when he scored. And the Bison, they got the one seed this year, but they had a tough draw. It's tough to play a rival in South Dakota State. Then you get Wofford and Georgia Southern, two teams from the, from the SOCON that run that triple option style. It's something the Bison don't see during the regular season. They were able to handle it with Wofford, but Georgia Southern, they executed effectively. Luckily for the Bison, they had that home field advantage. I think if they would have been on the road, they would have been in a 
lot of trouble, but unfortunately they were able to get it done. Last year it seemed like the Bison cruised through the playoffs. This year it seemed like they relied more on their defense and low scoring games to just sneak by. And you mentioned the defense, that's huge for the Bison this year. 11.43 points a game, only 223 total yards, about 131 of that is passing. All three of those stats first in the NCAA, and they gave up under 100 yards rushing. That's third in the NCAA right now. So the defense not only has gotten them through the playoffs, but has gotten them through this entire season. At one point in time, they were allowing less than seven points a game. They had eight to ten things that they were ranked number one in the nation in at, at one point in time too and it's they've relied on that to keep them tight in every game win or lose that indiana state game their defense only allowed three points on defense 14 on offense so the, it, the defense has been there all season the bison are 27 and 2 in the last two seasons and this is with a lot of youth at the helm one of these youthful, youthful players is junior quarterback Brock Jensen. Jensen has received a lot of criticism this season, but has still managed to take NDSU to their second straight national championship appearance. After an incredible sophomore year, expectations were high for Jensen in his junior year. Last season, Jensen had 2,524 yards and only four interceptions, compared to the 2,216 yards and eight interceptions this season. If numbers uh, were the complete measure of a quarterback, then we'd probably say we're struggling just a little bit, but ultimately it comes down to winning games, and I know we've won a lot more games with him at the helm than we've lost. The Bison have accumulated a 31-5 and record with Jensen under center, including a 10-1 and record in the playoffs. Jensen and the rest of the team are confident that if the game comes down to it, the young quarterback will be able to make the plays. That's what quarterbacks do. You have to... You have to make big plays, uh, whether it be your legs or your arm, and, and I feel extremely confident in, in, in making the, the throw at a, at a crucial time. Uh, he's a championship quarterback, and you know, we'll ride on that. He's a game, he's a game uh, coach out there, and you know, we're following him. Even though Jensen is averaging 10 yards less per game and completing 6% less of his passes, he has still been able to make the big plays all season. Jensen has 17 passing touchdowns this season compared to the 15 last season, and also has rushed for over 300 yards. And I try to do whatever I can to, to help the team, and, and uh, you know whatever Coach Vegan calls, whatever play call that comes in, um, try to execute to the best of your ability. Even with the pressure of being the reigning national champions and being ranked number one for most of the season, Brock Jensen has been able to find a way to win. It's an attitude that uh, you know what, no situation is going to frazzle you, no situation is going to get you down. You're able to bounce back um, in almost any, any, any type of scenario. With one more season left, Jensen has another year to improve upon his second place NDSU records in completions and yards. Consecutive national championships would be a great thing to add to his resume as well. Brock Jensen's passing numbers are down this season from last, but his rushing numbers are up. He has almost twice as many rushing yards. It seems like Jensen just knows how to find a way to win. And it's been difficult for him because he hasn't had the same core receivers. Last year he had that downfield threat, and Warren Holloway doesn't really have that this year. Zach Bra can get downfield, but he's been banged up. A lot of receivers have been banged up, and that's difficult. You're not on the same page with your receivers all the time, but you're right. The guy just finds a way to win football games. If he's asked to hand the ball off, run the ball, do whatever he's got to do, he's going to get it done and find a way to win. But another important player is, and that is yet to be here in the national championship, the sophomore running back, John Crockett. Crockett won Missouri Valley Newcomer of the Year this season and provided an explosive element that the offense needed. Against the stout Sam Houston State defense that allows 84 rushing yards per game, Crockett and Sam O'Jury each need around 55 yards to reach 1,000. This would be the second straight season that NDSU would have two 1,000-yard rushers. After watching the game at home last season, Crockett has finally realized the fun that comes with a trip to Frisco. He has not lost sight of the main goal, however. When I first came out of here, I, I understand that this is still business. You know, it, it, yes, it's a fun ride. It's fun to be here. It's a fun to be around all, you know, all the media and, and all that jazz. But at the end of the day, it's about winning. And that's something that we don't lose sight of. Jake Crockett brings an entirely new element to this team. Sam O'Jury, that power back, who's going to run it between the tackles. John Crockett, explosive. He's got that look in his eye. He's going to find a hole and make big plays. Crockett is one of the nicest guys you'll meet off the field, but on game day, he is scary. He is intense. He just wants to pound the ball and win the game.
Now, something else to, to pay attention to, the Bison have had three weeks off. They got three weeks from Georgia Southern until Frisco. They got some time off, got to spend it with their families, and got to heal up most importantly because another note that has been very closely watched all week is the health of the Bison defense. Already without Colton Hegel and Levon Perry, this was a banged up group and after three physical wins. A major concern has been a linebacker Grant Olson, who was hospitalized with a complex complication. Grant Olson was given medication and was cleared by the doctors to play. Quarterback Brian Shepard was available in the last game against Georgia Southern, but because of a lack of conditioning, was not able to go. He will also be back today. The Bison defense know they will have their hands full today and are ready for another challenge. Anytime, anytime we go on the field, we always talk about it. We want the game on us. and that, um, You know, we're a competitive group, and we like we like the pressure. We welcome it. Um, you know, I know coaches always talk about big moments and big games, big players rise to the occasion, and that's something that we've had guys do all, all year round. Um, so, you know, we're definitely looking forward to another great opportunity to play a great offense. And I think three weeks is much needed for this team. You lose a couple of guys like Colton and Levon, you need to have everybody healthy, especially your middle linebacker. And they're facing a very tough Sam Houston State offense that has a different element that they had last season. They're passing more, so they need that secondary to be in good shape. And this is a very much improved Sam Houston State coming up after the break. We'll show you just how good the Bearcats are. Watch SU TV News on Cable One. Produced by students of Bison Information Network, we promise to bring you all the latest news and sports from the campus of North Dakota State University. Watch SU TV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. Hey, I'm Alex. I'm Austin. And I'm here to tell you about 15 on 15. It means MatBus arrives every 15 minutes on Route 15. From downtown to around town. Find out more about 15 on 15 at MatBus.com. Check it out on Facebook and Twitter. Keyword, MatBus. So fast and convenient. There are way more than 15 reasons to check out 15 on 15. I ride MatBus. And I ride MatBus. And, and you, you should, should too. too. Welcome back to the 2013 FCS Championship pregame show brought to you by the Bison Information Network. The Bearcats walked off this very field disappointed last season after a 17-6 loss to this North Dakota State team. However, they made it their mission to get back to Frisco and they have done just that. Here is a look at their road to Frisco. Things started about three and a half hours from here at home in Huntsville, Texas with Cal Poly. They won that game 18 to 16. As they have all season, the Bearcats went on the road for the quarterfinal to Bozeman, Montana against the Bobcats of Montana State and won convincingly 34 to 16. In their own wild and crazy semifinal, the Bearcats went to Cheney, Washington on the red turf to take on Eastern Washington and held on to win after a 42-7 run by the Eagles. They won that game 45-42. Now Sam Houston State held a lead in all those games. They faced only Big Sky Conference teams, the three teams that tied for the lead in the Big Sky Conference, and they had a couple close games. And they've had a difficult season. They played two FBS games against Texas A&M and Johnny Football, and also against Baylor. So they've played a tough schedule. They only had three regular season home games. They went on the road, they gave one of those up. So 
this has been a road tested Sam Houston State team. They talked about it. They're more tested than they were last year and they are ready to go. And Jake, this is a much improved Sam Houston State team. Defensively, they only give up 84 rushing yards a game. And offensively, that's probably where they've improved most is their passing game. Coach Willie Fritz knew they had to be better passing the football. They don't pass for that many more yards, but their quarterback, Brian Bell, so much more efficient, so much smarter as a quarterback. Very important. They have that two-dimensional offense. Last season, the Bison were worried most about that rushing defense. Tim Flynn is an incredible rusher. He is always back there, but now they have Brian Bell who can heave the ball down the field, and it's going to be tough for this Bison defense. Another weapon at the dispense of the Bearcats is a 5-foot, 10-inch quarterback who is may not throw the ball extremely well, but is definitely a playmaker. Here's more on quarterback Richard Sincere. Richard Sincere has played quarterback his entire life, including three seasons at Sam Houston State. But this season, he has only attempted five passes. It's a good experience, you know. I'm just thankful to have a coaching staff and teammates that believe in my ability to put me in various positions to make plays. And Sincere operates out of the Wildcat formation, and with over 600 rushing yards this season, he has had plenty of success. I get the play call and then, you know, look over the defense and just try to see what advantage we can take as a team to get a big play. Although the Wildcat is far from a normal offense, it is something the rest of the team has embraced. Kind of how our offense works, we've done that since day one, since Coach Roos has gotten here, and so uh, us switching quarterbacks or anything really isn't that big of a uh, shocker for us. It's a little different. You gotta, you don't really notice all the time. There will be times where I don't even know he's back there and I'm snapping it to him. Both quarterbacks bring very different styles, but they each take different things away from the other. Uh, we definitely feed off each other. Just uh, I don't know about uh, strategy-wise or technique-wise, but we definitely feed off each other as in like motivation and firing each other up. We just try to come come together with something to, uh, so both of us can be successful when we at quarterback. Sincere knows he may not see the field as much, but when his number is called, he is going to make a big impact. I don't want to be selfish about it, you know, so if I can make a play, I'm going to make it. And if I can put one of my teammates in position to make the play, then I'll do the same. Jake Sincere is one of those guys, very effective, very fast at running that Wildcat. And the Bison, this playoffs have been very good about stopping option Wildcat types of formations, but it's been different because you knew the Wildcat and the, the option was coming against Georgia Southern and Wofford. They'll just throw this in at random times, so you've got to be prepared when number six is on the field. The Wild Bearcat, as Sam Houston State calls it, is definitely going to make sure that the linebackers and the defensive linemen keep their head in the game and are ready to make a tackle at all times. We are getting closer and closer to kickoff here at FC Dallas Stadium. After the break, we will give you our predictions for the 2013 FCS National Championship. Jitters is your home for quality coffee drinks. Whether you crave an espresso, iced coffee, mocha, or macchiato, Jitters has just what you need. Now featuring breakfast foods like caramel rolls, bagels, and more, be sure to get your day started right. Located on 12th Avenue North, Jitters has a friendly, relaxed atmosphere with Wi-Fi capability to get all of your studying done on time. Get your fix only at Jitters. Hey, I'm Alex. I'm Austin. And I'm here to tell you about 15 on 15. It means MatBus arrives every 15 minutes on Route 15. From downtown to around town. Find out more about 15 on 15 at MatBus.com. Check it out on Facebook and Twitter. Keyword, MatBus. So fast and convenient. There are way more than 15 reasons to check out 15 on 15. I ride MatBus. And I ride MatBus. And, and you, you should, should too. too. Watch SU TV News on Cable One. Produced by students of Bison Information Network. 
we promise to bring you all the latest news and sports from the campus of North Dakota State University. Watch SU TV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. Jake, before we give predictions, let's look at last year's game and, and how it played out between these two teams. But the scoreboard at the end of the day showed a 17-6 victory for NDSU, but it was really just a couple of big plays that won the game for them. It came down to special teams and defense for the Bison. They had the two interceptions, the one returned all the way to the one yard line. They also had that big fake punt that got them the first down that led to their first touchdown. It was a game that the Bison won on defense and special teams. We've broken down both of these teams. We're about an hour away from kickoff. Jake, what's your prediction? I think that both these teams have stronger offenses than last season and also have stronger defenses than last season. I think the Bison will squeak out a 20 to 17 victory. I think Sam Houston State's very good against the rush, so I think Crockett and O'Jury will have a tough day. But Brock Jensen, the guy finds a way to win. He's won a state championship in high school. He won a national championship last year. He's going to find a way to make sure NDSU is on top at the end of the day. I like the Bison 20 to six here in Frisco, Texas. And that is going to do it for our coverage in this Bison Information Network pregame show. It's been an event field week here in Frisco and we are getting very close to game time here at FC Dallas Stadium. It's the 2013 National Championship between the North Dakota State Bison and the Sam Houston State Bearcats. For Jake Cheetah and Ryan Nelson saying thank you so much for watching. Jitters is your home for quality coffee drinks. Whether you crave an espresso, iced coffee, mocha, or macchiato, Jitters has just what you need. Now featuring breakfast foods like caramel rolls, bagels, and more, be sure to get your day started right. Located on 12th Avenue North, Jitters has a friendly, relaxed atmosphere with Wi-Fi capability to get all of your studying done on time. Get your fix only at Jitters. Hey, I'm Alex. I'm Austin. And I'm here to tell you about 15 on 15. It means MapBus arrives every 15 minutes on Route 15. From downtown to around town. Find out more about 15 on 15 at MapBus.com. Check it out on Facebook and Twitter. Keyword, MapBus. So fast and convenient. There are way more than 15 reasons to check out 15 on 15. I ride MapBus. And I ride MapBus. And, and you, you should, should too. too. Watch SU TV News on Cable One. Produced by students of Bison Information Network, we promise to bring you all the latest news and sports from the campus of North Dakota State University. Watch SU TV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. Watch SU TV News on Cable One. Produced by students of Bison Information Network, we promise to bring you all the latest news and sports from the campus of North Dakota State University. Watch SU TV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. Hey, I'm Alex. I'm Austin. And I'm here to tell you about 15 on 15. It means MapBus arrives every 15 minutes on Route 15. 
From downtown? To around town. Find out more about 15 on 15 at mapbus.com. Check it out on Facebook and Twitter. Keyword, Mapbus. So fast and convenient. There are way more than 15 reasons to check out 15 on 15. I ride Mapbus. And I ride Mapbus. And, and you should, should too. too.